So within Fast Reporter, I'm going to go ahead and pull in some files. Uh, so I essentially have two folders here. One is just some test files using a loopback cable. So like 100 meter, 200 meter cable in the middle. This other one is the loopback plug. And so uh, these are the traces that I have within my, my unit today. I'm going to go ahead and start with the loopback plug. So I have four files here. I'm going to go ahead and drag them in. These ones happen to be SOR. And so these are not ideal, but these are the only loopback ones that I have in my computer. So if you notice here, um, you know, we have a launch cable, but we don't have a receive cable. So you see on the far end here, we don't have a receive cable. So this particular contractor that was doing this work did not use a receive cable. So, you know, we'll just forego that portion. But the process is exactly the same. So this is fiber number one. This is a trace number one or file number one, rather. So this is essentially testing from one over to two. And so to give you an idea of what that means is if I'm looking at my my trace here, this is my launch cable here, and you'll see it's nulled out. I don't have a receive. So this is my loopback plug right here. So there's my loop plug. So this is A to B on strand number one. This is B to A on strand number two. So that's essentially what we have here. And then of course that would be the opposite for this other one over here. And so I'm gonna create bi-directional results here. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all four of these. And you'll notice how I have them saved here. You know, hub to remote, fiber one, two, three, and four. And I did put in some comments down here for each one of these. So one to two, two to one, you know, those types of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. And so essentially I just have two fibers here. I have two fibers that I'm testing. So this could be going to like a MF2 terminal or something like that, right? And so I wanna make sure that everything's nulled out. I go to the event table, my launch cable's nulled out. If I had a receive cable, which I should have used the receive cable, then I would have nulled out the receive cable as well, right? Um, and so in this case, we didn't have a receive cable, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but ideally, we would, we would have nulled it out. I'll show you in, the, in another example how to do that. And all we're doing is, with, with them highlighted, we have this button over here. It says create bi-directional loopback files. I'm gonna click on it. Here it is, my two pairs, my first pair and my second pair. It's gonna grab from one and two to make the first pair and three and four to make the second pair. Pair being strand, right? Strand number one, strand number two. Just hit next. And then I can do some auto naming if I want to. So let's say I wanna put in the fiber ID and I wanna put in the hub and the file name. Or I can use the existing file name documentation as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in here to kinda of show you how that works. Hit next. And then, so how does it want to do the auto naming? I'm going to use the identifiers based on the wavelength, and I'm going to put an underscore between it. Hit next, and this is what it's going to look like. When it's done, we're going to have these traces here, bidirectional traces, right? One, two, three, and four. So all four fibers. So all four fibers. I think earlier I said two, but I meant four. So here's the first bidirectional at 1550, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and then here's the naming convention, right? So, and you can see which files it used. So it used from file hub remote 001 and then hub remote 002 to get the backside. See how it did that? So to get strand number one, it used these two different files and then it was the opposite for these two. So if you're happy with that, great. If not, you can always go back, but I like this. This is exactly what I want. I'll hit next. Now I need to select a loop. If I have a loopback plug, I don't want to use automatic. I want to use manual. I want to use manual selection. And then all I have to do is find my loop plug. And mine is pretty obvious. It's right here in the middle at 5.4. So you see it's right there in the middle at 5.4. So it's fairly obvious uh, here in this one here. So it's a nine kilometer fiber. So it's 5.4 there. So I'm gonna go ahead and on this one for all of them, I'll highlight it, set it as a loop, highlight it again, set it as the end. So now there's our loop plug. And so when I hit next, it's gonna create these files and here's kind of the final step here. It's gonna say, all right, this is what I'm creating here. And I'm gonna keep the originals in, in the project file. That means these original SORs will stay. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate this, hit okay. And you know, of course, got the save back, you know, save location here. 
Hit OK. And then there we go. There's fiber number one, bidirectional, fiber number two, bidirectional, three and four. So simple as that. All right, it's as simple as that. So that works very, very well. Um, to kind of show you what it would look like if there was a loopback plug or a loopback cable, rather, I'm going to go ahead and pull in from those same traces here. I'm going to go over to loopback cable. I'm going to grab these here. You'll see how it's named. Receive transmit instead of A and B. And so if you look at these here, if I look at them individually, you'll see what it looks like. So here's my, my launch cable. Here's my receive cable. And my loop starts here, ends here. So this is a loop cable. So if I look at that event, if, if I go to the event table here, go to event number four, You'll see there's a section, there's a 150 meter section here. So I have a 150 meter launch, I have a 150 meter receive, and I have a 150 meter loop cable. And so I would do the, you know, very, something very similar here. I would select all the traces, make sure that everything's you know, referenced out, go to generate bidirectional file, and here's what it's going to generate. So fibers one through five here, you got transmit and receives here. So it's selected all the pairs. I'll go to next. And again, do the same kind of naming convention, whatever you want to put in here, right? So, you know, whatever you want to put in here. So I'm just going to do, because I like doing hub and remote, and I'll include these in the file name. I'm going to start it at fiber number one here. Go to next. I want to use the same identifiers, put the wavelengths in there if there's multiple wavelengths. I like having an underscore. Hit next, and you'll see how we have, you know, what it's mating together you know, as far as bi-directional traces go. So I go to next here, just like before, and we can do two things, right? We can do automatic loop detection, you know, and kind of give it to the length of the loop. But again, I like doing manual, that's just the way I am. So I go find the start of the loop, which is here at event number four. So that's the start of the loop. Here's the end of the loop. And we'll go to next. And then it creates the bi-directional just like it did before. Hit OK, and now we've created the bidirectional files. It works very, very well. That's pretty cool. And if you're unsure exactly where the loop is at, you know, you can always just set your markers. So I like to set my markers, you know, I'll set the A marker at zero. So the span start, and then the span end is at uh, 2.24 uh, 2 here. So I'll just do 2.24. And so that's essentially, you know, for, from one side to the other, right? So let me, uh, let me move this over. I didn't get it perfect here. So close enough. You get the point, right? <clears throat> and so this will give you the distance from B to A, which is 2.2 kilometers. Right? So what I, essentially what I do is I just take the B marker here, and I'm going to put it in the middle. So I just figure out, well, what is half of 2.2? Somewhere around 1.1. And it puts me smack dab in the middle of my two ports here, you know, for my loop cable. And of course, I can always confirm by putting the markers here. It's 2.35. Put the marker here, in here. Get it to move here. And it's going to be you know, roughly the same distance, right? And, and, and so, so, so basically, that's what, you know, you know, to kind of measure out your loop cable and all that good stuff. So two point, you know, there you go. I don't have it exactly set, but you get the point. But that's basically it in a nutshell, right? That is uh, using Fast Reporter to create bidirectional, and you can also do unidirectional trace files uh, from a loop-backed fiber. My name is Kevin Pires. Thank you very much.